Um, as, as Alan said, my name is Simon Modford. I'm the founder of Web3 IoT and also the monthly Internet of Things Meetup Group. Just Google uh, Internet of Things uh, Edinburgh Meetup and you'll, you'll find the Meetup Group. The next one's actually on uh, Thursday at uh, Cocan, which is right next door, 6 to 9. So you're very welcome to join us. Um, so, yeah, I did bring a Bluetooth mouse. I don't know if it's supposed to be a sort of a technical, or am I going to have to. Yeah, it kind of works. Fantastic. So I've been asked to talk about Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence, and also known as Web 3.0, or the machine web. Now, why Web 3.0? Well, a little bit of uh, historical data here. The Internet, of course, has been a, around a lot longer than the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web as we know it, Web 1.0, was invented by Sir, by Sir, Sir Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. And it affected it was a very different kind of web, it was just very static, and you could only consume data in one direction. Then about 10 years ago, it transitioned into an interactive web, or a social web, which was Web 2.0, as it was commonly known, and as a result, we got uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, all those things we know and love. But very recently, we started to transition into a machine web, and uh, there were more machines connected to the web, today than people, and very soon there will be far more machines connected to the, to the web. And I'm talking about these things, I should really be on full screen, no, let's have a look. Is that doing what I need it to do? I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, wearables, embeddables, flying things, autonomous transportation, essentially uh, estimates vary wildly, depending on who you believe. Um, between 20 to 50 billion connected devices by 2020. But the, the most, I think, uh, interesting uh, stat is that around only 1% of all things that could be connected currently are. So that's massive growth. So how does that relate to health? Well, we're going to see a health revolution. And specifically, what I see are wearables and available connected devices monitoring our health 24-7. So if there's a tiny genetic mutation or any kind of uh, toxins or disease detection or illness or an impending injury, your AI, your personal AI assistant in the cloud will be able to uh, pick it up, identify it, monitor it, and give a health, uh, a, you know, a medical a professional um, guidance uh, in the event that it needs treatment. So we're really talking about connected technology um, a focus on prevention, of course, which is better than cure. And there's an increasing number of all kinds of fitness and well wellness uh, devices. These are just some of many, many examples. This is a, a disposable uh, patch with a sensor, and if you have too much light exposure UV, then it'll notify you. Um, this is a fitness belt that monitors your calorie intake and so on and so forth. It's called a wealth developed by an offshoot of Samsung. Loads of fitness trackers. Uh, smart clothing was a big theme at CES this year, which is the big con consumer electronic show in uh, Vegas. Uh, kind of stress and sleep tech, massive, hugely growing uh, space to help us uh, with our well being as opposed to kind of health and actual illness. This is all about prevention and stress, the major contributor. Um, pregnancy, uh, baby, uh, infant uh, monitors and technology, big, big theme. So let's head over to prognosis and diagnosis. So this, I'm sure there'll be a lot of talk of IBM Watson and cloud-based AI revolutionizing the process of uh, uh, diagnosis. And it just turns out the machines are better at doing very uh, repetitive, very analytical uh, tasks where, where a high level of accuracy and repetitiveness um, is involved. Machines are just much better at, at those types of tasks than humans. And these are just some examples that I identified that I, I just think are just game changing. So this is an app, um, it's called Face to Gene, and it's an app where it just takes a single photo of the patient and within a, a few minutes it can actually diagnose if there's a genetic condition. And in some cases, teams of medical professions, professionals have taken years, if not decades, to actually diagnose something that this app can do in a few minutes uh, using machine learning. Um, another uh, technology, it analyzes voice, and it can um, identify really subtle 
uh, cognitive um, impairments in your voice to predict uh, illnesses like Parkinson's um, or dementia many years in advance, and, and the human ear just can't pick up those, those slight impairments. Uh, also, I, I don't know if anyone's sort of read in the news recently that in the UK, uh, some, uh, the, the, uh, some academics came forward and were able to more or less predict when a heart was going to fail based on 30,000 different data points in the heart itself using MRI scans, blood work from no more than about 200 patients and about eight years worth of medical data. They can predict with accuracy when your heart is actually going to stop pumping, which is uh, impressive, I'd say. So IBM Watson, treatment and cure, we're going to see incredible breakthroughs in uh, uh, drug discovery. Um, you know, a GP is just not going to be able to have access to, in real time, vast quantities of, of patient data, uh, academic um, uh, papers, new discoveries as they happen, to keep on, to, on top of that, and, and medical analytical information. To be able to keep uh, on top of, of all that big data is almost impossible for a Russian busy GP. So, that's what, as I said, cloud-based analysis is going to be a big deal. Elder care, uh, ticking time bomb. We have a global aging population explosion. We don't have enough human carers to take care of them. So unfortunately, it's not as good as a human, but we are going to see companionship robots offering entertainment. Um, they're going to be doing very important tasks in addition to sort of chatting away and entertaining and, and giving companionship to people who are perhaps are living um, alone a lot of the time. And they'll do things like uh, monitor uh, a dosage of medication, um, alert uh, a carer in the event of a trip or fall. So this is a huge area, very exciting, lots of uh, opportunities for uh, startup entrepreneurs and new businesses. Security, um, this is, uh, of course, practically everything is going to be connected. Medical equipment will be connected if it isn't already. And that's just increasing the attack surface for hackers. Now this is a, a consumer product, it's a baby um, monitor called Owlet, and it was shipped with no, no security at all, and the tech press just tore it apart. Vulner uh, the vulnerabilities being exploited, hacks are increasing dramatically, they're going off to patient data, and if you can imagine embeddables being hacked, um, that, that are supporting uh, a particular sort of function, that could be critical, lead to uh, loss of life. If you are developing uh, apps, Please, particularly hardware, uh, Google the uh, OWASP guidelines to help embed security into the, the, the connected device, particularly if you're, if you're dealing with patient data, really, really private, important information like that. So privacy concerns. This is a real philosophical dilemma. Uh, recently, uh, one point million uh, patient uh, uh, um, uh, records per year will be handed over these are patients at the Royal Free Hospital in London to Google's DeepMind, okay? And five years worth of patient data. Now, this could translate into half a million hours worth of added productivity. That means uh, that all those hours could be focused on patient care. But do we want Google having that much of our data? I, I don't know. You know this, is, this is a question, you know, philosophical question. We're going to start looking into this, having a debate about it. There are going to be widespread redundancies as a lot of these jobs that people are doing will be um, done by machines and computers. So how's that going to affect us? But I think the good news is that there's something called mixed initiative where teams of people and computers are working together in harmony. And it turns out pretty much all the, the group dynamics research that's been done, that mixed initiative where humans and machines work together are outperforming teams comprising just humans or just autonomous machines. So I think that we have a, an opportunity to utilize artificial intelligence, connected technology, and work together to hopefully make everyone's lives a lot better. So good luck to you all over the next few days. This is a huge opportunity for you guys individually to make a massive impact. So go hack. That's it, I'm done. I managed to do it in 9 minutes 55 seconds.